Welcome to the Bethune Roundtable 2021. Today we're going to talk about laparoscopic surgeries in rural areas. Why are we doing that? Laparoscopic surgeries is one of the landmark innovations that uh, dramatically change the way we perform surgeries. The first one, in fact, was the discovery of anesthesia, then the asepsis. And although this is as significant as uh, those two innovations, the penetration of laparoscopy surgery is not great because even now only about 10% of the world carry out laparoscopic surgeries. Before we go into the details, we'll have a short look at the Association of Rural Surgeons of India and International Federation of uh, Rural Surgeons. Have a look at the two minute video before we proceed. The Association of Rural Surgeons of India is a group of brilliant surgeons who work among the rural areas, serving the poor and the marginalized. There were many innovations that were made by the rural surgeons to serve the poor and the marginalized. And one of them, the use of mosquito net for tension-free hernia repair, is listed as one of the six famous and effective low-cost innovations for surgery by the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization also included the gas encephalationless laparoscopic surgical equipment as part of the WHO compendium of innovative medical devices for resource poor setting. The gasless laparoscopic surgeries or GILS in short, was developed to meet the needs of the patients in rural and remote areas. It makes laparoscopic surgeries possible under spinal anesthesia at a very low cost. The association was instrumental in starting DNB course in rural surgery and to get it recognized by the Medical Council of India. They also offer fellowship in rural surgery. Recently, they started a variety of uh, certificate level courses with the innovative online on-site training format. The annual conference of the association attracted many overseas delegates, and this resulted in formation of the International Federation of Rural Surgeons. These are two YouTube channels where training videos are posted for the rural surgeons, and also patient education videos for the rural patients. The association also arranges workshops to teach innovative gasless surgical techniques and other low-cost innovations like uh, the just external fixator system or rural urology using the laptop cystoscope. All you need to do is to connect the scope to the laptop computer and start doing these diagnostic scopies or minor procedures. Thanks to the impact and success of the model in empowering the rural surgeons, many who are interested in global surgeries have pitched in to help. Coming back to laparoscopic surgeries, why is uh, laparoscopic surgery is important? They cause uh, less infection. There is less post-operative pain. The hospital stay is short. And there is a uh, much better utilization of the limited uh, resources in rural areas. This makes them very, very relevant for rural areas. But then, as you mentioned earlier, the penetration is not good because of uh, several reasons. One of the most important reasons is that we need general anesthesia for laparoscopic surgeries. And the logistics of uh, providing gases for anesthesia and for surgery is very, very difficult in rural areas. And then there is a very high investment which is necessary for laparoscopic surgeries. Added to that is the cost of uh, disposables. But of course, this didn't uh, prevent the rural surgeons from trying out laparoscopic surgeries. When we started, we used the cystoscope to carry out uh, laparoscopic surgeries. In fact, we used the BP cuff for uh, encephalation. And uh, we started with the small procedures like diagnostic laparoscopies. And then uh, we carried out appendicectomies with a small incision over the McBurney's point. And then when we became proficient, we wanted to do laparoscopic surgeries in rural areas. But the main problem, as I said, was we have uh, no anesthesiologist. And uh, most of the time it was the nurse anesthetists were using, uh, as you can see here, EMO and ether for anesthesia, which is much, much less expensive. Again, the equipment, if you look at the Cautery machine is a World War II cautery machine. 
but then uh, we made modifications uh, like we used a dental compressor for encephalation the first 5000 laparoscopic surgeries we carried out with the ether and the yemo machine and then we started uh, reusing the disposables in fact the very first uh, disposable port we used it for more than 500 times then we changed the techniques in fact we started doing many laparoscopic assisted uh, procedures that gave the advantage of uh, laparoscopic surgeries without the associated uh, cost and this is the context in which uh, gastric laparoscopic surgeries became very relevant dr hashimoto is uh, father of uh, gastric laparoscopic surgeries and he never did it for the cost sake and of course the early instruments he had used were very complex and difficult the initially they were all carried out for the sake of physiological advantages that isobaric uh, system offers especially if the patient is a compromised patient and the surgery is uh, prolonged uh, very long but then the early devices has a problem associated with tenting or uh, poor exposure even the mechanics devices did not make much of a difference to at the same time in india people started using gastric surgeries because of the fact that anesthesia and then there came many advances and modifications with the complex uh, instruments but which none of them actually significantly improved the exposure the first device which uh, sort of gave an exposure which is similar to the conventional laparoscopy surgery the abdominal lift device for dotel daniel krushinsky there were modifications of this in the second generation equipment and so on and uh, we got this uh, device made which gave us uh, almost uh, as good a exposure especially the bmi is less than 28 and it is very easy to use in remote areas so what did this do to us we did a more than 1500 surgeries where it may not otherwise be possible to do these uh, surgeries also there are many rural surgeons who had otherwise never done laparoscopic surgery who started doing these uh, laparoscopic surgeries this increased uh, care in rural areas so why do we need uh, gastric surgeries the most important uh, significant reason that we use is that surgeries are possible under spinal anesthesia including surgeries like cholecystectomies and then it can be used uh, even under the no power supply no gases and so on and uh, what we really like is that the learning curve is not as steep as for conventional laparoscopic surgeries and traditional open instruments can be used for it now we'll have uh, no will talk to you about uh, how we developed a training program and what are the various studies that we did to make sure that these procedures are not inferior to conventional laparoscopic surgeries thank you Yeah, Bethan Roundtable. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today on innovation in laparoscopic surgery for rural India. Following this fantastic talk by Dr. Ganaraj, I'll be talking about the diffusion processes of innovation in rural settings. Um, I share my experience on training rural surgeons in gastric laparoscopy technique in the rural northeast India, and finally discuss some points on implementation of new surgical technologies in global surgery. So, what are the challenges? when it comes to diffusion of innovation um according to this conceptual theory by professor rogers who was a communication theorist and sociologist uh, explains that diffusion process itself is a social process and over the time let's say the gastric laparoscopy technique uh, it requires enough evidence to reach to this tipping point which is the point of adoption where almost 20% uh, of the adoption has of this technology has started taking place by um, early adopters and following this as we communicate the importance of this technology 
uh, to uh, the relevant groups of people. Uh, more people are interested in this technology and the S curve, as you can see, uh, started, <clears throat> started, starts to go up and the adoption process of the technology starts increasing over the time period. However, it's not that simple uh, because we also need to understand the dynamics of the diffusion. And as explained in this article by Professor Wilson, uh, apart from the technology, we need to understand does actually the patient need this technology? Uh, what about the cost of learning uh, for those who are going to implement this technology in their settings? Uh, the supply chain manufacturing, uh, is it benefic beneficial for the manufacturer? Um, how can we convince the stakeholders um, who are going to use this technology um, in, in the region, uh, regional level or the national level. And also uh, the cost of use of this technology in the setting. Um, are the managers of the hospitals convinced that this is a cost-effective technique for their hospital, for their patients in the region? So I've been part of this surgical technologies group, as you can see, an interdisciplinary group of researchers who collaborated with the Associations of Rural Surgeons of India and, and the Maulana Azad Medical College in Delhi. We've talked about the gasless laparoscopy in the previous lecture and most of our project was based around this technique of performing laparoscopic surgeries in rural settings. But before that, I wanted to talk about this paper that was published in November 2020 by uh, Maulana Azad Medical College, which compares gasless uh, cholecystectomy and appendicectomy with uh, conventional laparoscopy. And as you can see, there was no difference in the operative time. Uh, and actually the interoperative vital signs were much better for those who had gasless laparoscopy technique. The pain scores were slightly higher for the gasless technique. However, the patients did not require uh, excess amount of painkillers to control their pain. Other outcomes like conversion rate or complication rates, there was no difference. So the study says that there is a potential for gasless laparoscopy to be used in the rural settings, and it's a non-inferior option to that of conventional laparoscopy. So our research was focused in um, the rural Northeast India, a population of 45 million people who lack access to surgical care, primarily because of the uh, health system and the geography of this region. According to the Disease Control Priorities 3 document published in 2015, 1.5 million deaths could be averted uh, if essential surgical procedures are provided. And many of these procedures are acute abnormal conditions that can um, save 9% of the deaths globally. For rural Northeast India, we feel that the overall surgical need from the data that we analyze is five and a half thousand, four hundred thousand population. And many of the surgical procedures in the region are amenable for laparoscopy and patients can benefit quality of surgical care. <clears throat> We map most of our projects to that of the Lancet uh, Global Surgery Indicators. And today I'm going to talk about the target study, which focuses on the specialist workforce density and surgical volume. The target study was um, an objective a feasibility study, which objectively uh, evaluated and trained rural surgeons, uh, seven rural surgeons of Northeast India in uh, laparoscopic surgery. Uh, using the gasless technique. We use the FLS um, scoring system to train them on laparoscopic simulators. And as you can see, uh, before training and after training, there was an improvement in the MISTEL score. Um, operative skills were uh, assessed using the OSAT score, which assesses the operative technique and uh, laparoscopic skills using the GOAL score. And um, finally, the costs of the uh, training program, and as you can see, as demonstrated here. So we feel that it is feasible to conduct these training programs for uh, rural surgeons um, for in gasless laparoscopy technique in the context that we were working in uh, and potentially has benefits if uh, a larger cohort of uh, rural surgeons are involved in the training, but further studies are required uh, to ensure the benefits of it. These are the five tasks uh, that they were trained on, uh, which 
uh, assesses different laparoscopic skills on depth perception, um, uh, bimanual dexterity, uh, the, um, laparoscopic suturing skills. And over here, you can see them in action here, um, trained by a group of uh, rural, uh, a group of Indian surgeons who are interested in rural surgery. And over here, uh, the line graph uh, describing the improvement in their scores for all those five tasks on the left side, uh, pre-training and post-training. And on the right side, you can see the uh, progression of their, their improvement in the laparoscopic skills and the overall scores. Two months later, we went to the uh, rural hospitals and trained them in the gasless laparoscopy technique uh, on their patients. Um, and it was phenomenal to see um, the rural surgeons being able to use this technique for their patients and bringing benefits to um, the community. Two years down the line, uh, we know that the rural surgeons are now performing these procedures independently um, and the number of cases that they perform has increased three folds. Here you can see some of the pictures of uh, them performing these procedures independently in their hospitals. Finally, um, our group has embarked on this uh, process of uh, improving the design of the gasless lift device. On the left, you can see the old device and now the new device called the RAISE device uh, that has uh, been evaluated for the past two years. The overall procedure was a collaborative process where uh, we agreed with, the, um, uh, with our partners in India that an improvement of the design would be of benefit to the end user. A truly collaborative process working with the rural surgeons, industry partners, designers. Uh, we conducted cadaveric studies in India as well as in 2020. Although we were faced by the pandemic, we continued the evaluation uh, virtually and involved our uh, team from India. And this is the final product, which, uh, which is still going uh, final evaluation before uh, the surgeon scan. Uh, are able to use that in their rural settings. So just coming to the end of my slides, I want to highlight that um, uh, health technology uh, is not just about the clinical aspects, but also the social, ethical, and holistic approach uh, in understanding the value of health technology and impacts of health technology uh, regionally or nationally. The World Health Organization talks about the systematic approach called the health technology assessment, which evaluates this impact and informs the policy decision making with the funds that are available for this health technology assessment. And I think as a global surgery community, we need to understand that the implementation of innovation, um, the patient is at the center of, of the innovation and the process of it is carried out ethically it has a sustainable element to it, uh, a collaborative uh, fashion in how the evaluation is taking place. And the innovation itself is frugal, that it can do more with less. Thank you very much for listening. I look out for any questions that you have. See you.